What's up guys, Tim Hulse of Drag Boss Garage, back for another explosive episode. And I mean explosive because it blew me away when I found this out. If you remember that episode I made with my daughter Elena on the Jack Roush time capsule, the Ford 351 Cleveland mystery motor. This is the valve cover from it. It's a Moroso, actually it's pretty nice. It's got some kind of coating in it, but we had, <laughs> we had already talked about this and we went inside and looked at the motor, looked how nice it is and we'll look at it now. So I posted that video and a guy named Lee Cooper messaged or commented on the video. And he said, hey, <clears throat> Drag Boss, I raced with, I worked for Jack, and he put in parentheses junior for like 15 years, I think back in the pro stock days. I also raced Wally Booth. And he said that TOE 548 that's all over this engine is really TOE is Tony Odo engines. And the engine number is 548, he said. And I'm like, okay. I mean, I've heard of Odo at one time. I knew he did some head work and stuff for Ford, and that's a whole nother story. Wait till you see that. And I said, okay, um, I appreciate that. And I said, well, let me do some research. I was, uh, it was a Saturday morning, and I looked up Tony Odo, and Tony Odo, RIP, he died about two years ago. Tony Odo Jr. told me. I called the shop and at like 10 a.m., which was our time, was really probably 7 or 7.30, he answers the phone, Tony Odo Jr. And I told him who I was and not to think I was crazy, but this is what I found out. And he said, you know what? Let me, let me check something and I'll call you back. So he went ahead and I was doing something and, I, and he called me back and, and messaged me a file. And, and look at this, this is what the file says. So it's pretty crazy. How this worked was his father built this engine right here. This is no Jack Roush time capsule engine. So that myth's debunked. This is actually a Tony Odo racing engine. Now here's the story, and this is what's gonna blow you away because I have all the documentation. You're probably never gonna see an engine, at least a Ford Cleveland, documented like this. Tony Odo engines is in Susan, California. He did a lot of work with NASCAR, did a lot of head work with Ernie Elliott, and they designed the C302 head that was still a Cleveland base, not Yates. So we'll talk about that in another video. Tony Jr. started the business when he was a kid, probably like 10 years old, he was building engines. And in fact, worked on this engine for sure. Well, we know this is an XE Block Cleveland. The, the date was 2 24 C2, which was March 24th, 1982. I probably the second run of these engines. Well, it's probably the first because I think they made the later ones in June or July. That's the date of this block, 1982. It's got Ford A3 heads that were made in January 13th of 83. The blocks in 82, the heads were made in 83. So the engine was said, hey, we're going to start making this engine in June of June 27th of 1983 is when this engine was going to be made, is when the design started to go down. The build sheet you'll see right here is from that date. And look at this build sheet. There is so much information. We want to know what it was for the bearing clearances. They're right there. 0025, rods and mains. You know, there's some oil restriction mentioned, 50 thousandths and 80 thousandths. I'm not sure what they are. This is an external wet sump engine. So it's not a regular wet sump from what I see on the outside. It looks like it's a roller cam, it's a crane cam. There's the lifter part numbers there. It's a 4025 bore. It said it has Ross pistons in it. Now the rods, I think are Carrillo rods because that's what the rod bolts came out. Roland T told me that they were Carrillo rod bolts. So we'll go with that and probably rods. Although it said Ross pistons in here but read that sheet. There's a lot of details and information that you're going to get out of that. And it was made for uh, Brooks Racing, an IMSA GTO road racing series. So Brooks Racing was in, um, I want to say it was in Michigan. And they bought this engine originally from Tony Odo. So they raced it somewhere in the year of 83 up until 84. Because what happened was it came back in... June 15th of 84. And if you look here, you can see the sheets 
Now what this is, is that tells when it was tore down and you can see Tony Jr. I think tore it down there. And then you look at all the hours that are in this engine. And that's, that's pretty cool to see that information there. So it was a total of about 21 hours in prep for that engine build, to freshen up. Now, if you look at it, it says in one area, it says the heads were four hours in prep time for assembly by Tony. And then another area in there, it said it was six hours. So who knows, it doesn't make any difference, but it's kind of cool to see those numbers and the history of this engine that we're gonna look at in detail. Now, that was 6.15.84. In 9.11 of 84, it was sold to Robbins Racing. Now, they're in Royal Oak, Michigan. So, they paid Tony Odo Engines a total of $14,000 for this engine. And you can see the receipt right here. And the other money is for the other stuff, you know, which was whatever it was, I can't read it, but I remember reading engine stand and engine crate and all this other stuff. So that was paid for in September of 84. They started to rebuild the engine in 11, six of 84. And you can see the sheet right here, rebuild was started on it, what they had to get for bearings and stuff. It was dyno on 11, 12 of 84. So six days that thing was built in dyno. 21 hours worth of time. And there's the dyno sheets, and this is amazing. So look through this information. I like the oil pressure ranges anywhere from like about 73 to 91. Um, it made 574.9 at 7,500. So it's got some good horsepower right there. Now that's the corrected, you can see that. And then the torque was like 454 at 57.50. So if that, I don't know how that relates to in 1984 horsepower. You know, I just got out of high school then. My Cougar, I was racing that with a Cleveland with a four barrel. And I don't know, I think it was running in the 1430s or something at that time before I had nitrous. But so it's a lot of information. That dyno sheet showed it had 36 degrees of timing. It looked like the jets were 70 and 72 and a 750 carb, if that's what that notation says. And then when you see the parts list that I'll put down that they have from 11, 14, you can see that they bought an 830 carb. So that, and the dyno sheet also says that that engine was built for Daytona, if you read that. So that's pretty cool to see. We don't know what compression ratio it is. We know it has the roller cam. I, it's got a, I'll look at, I'll flip it over now. We'll look at the top side and get some information. I'll give you another look at the bottom end because we got to figure out what we're going to do because it's pretty exciting to have this history and documentation on this engine. And then I can show it to you from an engine that we thought was a Jack Roush that had been sitting for 25 years as a story I got in a warehouse in Michigan to find out the history of how it was raced, the horsepower that it made, who built it, this clearances. I mean, you're not gonna find anything like this. So let's get looking at it again and then we're gonna decide what we're gonna do with it. So we'll take another look at the bottom end. You've seen it in the other videos, but it's one of those things you just, I don't know, it's just beautiful to look at. And to realize that this is a, this was a $14,000 race engine in 1984. And what's unique about this piece, now that I know the history, is everywhere I look, represents Tony Odo, TOE, 548 baby, there it is. Every cap that's, massaged and smooth has that number the block has it now I see it here it's on the front of the block it's always cool to see the history all right guys here we are back up top got it flipped around I'll tell you the thing's extremely clean I was looking in the Spark plug holes. The pistons have a little oxidation on them from probably sitting. I tried to look in the exhaust ports. You could see inside. So there's some dirt on the top of the valves. It probably should come apart and really be cleaned before taking a chance of firing it up, I think. But people had asked about it. It's the Crane Gold Rocker Arms. Now these, if you can see, these are all 1.6 ratio. I'm not sure what that 13 means but it's on all of them. 
So they're all labeled. What rocker arm goes with what? This is number one intake, number one exhaust. So they're all labeled like that. And it's really a unique piece. So I turned on the light so you can get a little bit of a better view of everything. There's the A3 heads and the dates right there was like 113.83. That anodized gold looks pretty cool on there. So let's take a look in the ports. You can see they have epoxy work on them here on both sides. I can tell you that takes a, it's a lot of work to do that. These heads have some time in them. There's no doubt about that. It was built for the IMSA tracks, which is a circle track. Not necessarily NASCAR because it's got more curves in it, like a road race type setup. So this thing probably hammered, man, I'll tell you. Pretty nice. It almost looks like old oil. So that's it. So now the mystery is solved. It's, this is really Tony Odo engines number 548 from originally 627 of 1983 with a freshen up and fall of 84 it sold for fourteen thousand dollars there i threw the intake back on it let's look down those ports not a lot of work done to that intake but it has been smoothed out a little bit you can see at the tops but yeah it's a pretty good shot now what are we going to do with it that's the next story. Stay tuned for the next chapter. Like the card says, knowledge is power, and you never know what you're going to see or learn at Drag Boss Garage. So stay tuned.